What's up, guys? Welcome to the Real Muscle Podcast. Today, I have on a very special guest. I got Anthony Charles and his son, Mike Charles. He's not his brother, it's his son. <laughs> <laughs> how y'all feeling, y'all? Hey, kid, how you doing? Good, man. Thanks, man. No complaints. So, I want to start off and ask uh, how y'all been dealing with this whole uh, pandemic as far as uh, work. You guys able to work? You guys able to, you know, say, provide for your family, able to work out, all that good stuff? Well, um, fortunately, I, it really hasn't affected me that much mm-hmm. in the sense that I normally work at home. So I've been working at home for years. I'm a project manager, so I handle accounts throughout the U.S. and internationally. Mm-hmm. The downside of that is now that they're not in school, they actually invaded on my space. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the downside. Matter of fact, let me... Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna share the screen, right? So check this out. I'm a, uh, I want to show them the, the the whole uh gym thing, the home gym thing. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Let me share that. Right. Share All right. So, Cause I, when I first saw that, I was like, yo, this is crazy. I never seen people training in their living room. Let me find a good one. So I'm on Mike's Instagram right now. I I, I didn't even introduce Mike formally. What's good, Mike? How, how you feeling, man? Good man, how's it going? No complaints, man. No complaints. Right here. So you you over here shoulder pressing <laughs> in the living room. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. That's crazy. That's crazy. Pushing it. Pushing it. You gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, so uh well, how about you, Mike? You you were able to still get the bodybuilding, the work and work done, and all that. Yeah, so um, uh, gyms closed over here March fifteenth. I think it was. Okay. March, I think it was March fifteenth. Yeah, so. Uh, me too. So initially, we didn't have anywhere to go. So I, um, when I was like ninth grade, eighth grade, I got a weightlifting set for like Christmas or my birthday, one or the other. So that set that you see, we we pulled that back out the of the the spare room we have, and we put it up in the family room, and we just used that for a bit. Um, I went and bought a few more pairs of pairs of dumbbells. I got like one tens. I bought sixties. I had forties. I had thirties, and then we had four hundred and fifty pounds worth of like plates. Uh-huh. So we did that for like two months, and then we were fortunate enough to uh, come across somebody who has like a studio. Yeah. And uh, from there, we were able to go. We've been going there since about May now. Okay, okay. But so, yeah, I mean, we definitely were fortunate that we had something for to keep us busy for two months. And more unfortunate because he's in prep. Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> so for him, he, it, it was, you know, he had to keep, keep going. What show are you getting ready for, uh, Anthony? I'm doing uh, NPC North Americans in Pittsburgh, uh, 13 days out now. So I actually just seen a post about that. It's going to be outside. Is that happening? Yeah. Um, Gary Unit, who is the promoter for that show, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting that when you come across people that, you know, normally would just do things according to plan, and then when the plan gets upset, they really don't know what to do or how to go about it. But Gary, is, he's innovative. You know, he thinks outside the box. And I think with having that knowledge and experience, was able to take that and bring the show to an outside arena under tents and still have the capability and have the show, which is ideal. You know, being that you can't do anything here in, in New York, New Jersey area. You guys you guys are in, in Jersey. You guys live in Jersey. Right? No, we're in New York, Long Island, but most of our shows are in New Jersey. Okay, okay. Um, in Teaneck, New Jersey. Like uh, New York Pro, which is actually the same day, is now being held down in Tampa. Yeah. You know, the, uh, they hold a lot of shows at that Marriott Hotel, right, in, in Teaneck? That, yes. That that was my first job ever was at that Marriott. So, oh really? Yeah. So working there, I remember I, I was getting I, I was into bodybuilding and stuff, and then 
the guys will see me and, I, and then uh, the employees will be like, oh, he's going to be next. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> 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 uh, it's funny. Oh, well. what, what you guys make of this whole uh, COVID thing, though? Do, do you think that it, it's been, like, exaggerated? Do you think it's warranted? How do you, how do you guys feel about it? Like, <laughs> I, I think we, we've had open discussions on it, you know. Um, we don't always agree on everything, but we don't disagree on everything either, you know. So it, it's it's good to have a conversation and dialogue with someone, you know, with some level of intellect, and you can actually have a debate on different, you know, different points of view. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it's 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 it is what it is, you know. And the thing is, you have to, for me, in my specific situation, have to think again outside the box of what is normal. And then take a look and see how can we still achieve the same goals by doing or performing something else, mm-hmm. you know, um, and still stay in line with the plan. Okay, okay. But like, uh, how do you feel about about that, Mikey? You, you seem like you got a, <laughs> you seem like you got a different opinion. <laughs> um. All right. So he's a project manager. He's still able to work at home. Okay. Um. My girlfriend. Myself and my mom are all in the teaching field. Oh. So we literally have not worked since March 13th, I think it is, 13th, March 13th. Wow. So we've been out of work for five, six months, and we plan on going back in uh, not this coming Monday, the following Monday for, like, you know, some meetings Sometimes and stuff. Okay. Um, but, uh, I mean – at first, you know, it's, it's con- it was concerning because you didn't we didn't know what was going on. Yeah. You know, um, we were told two weeks initially, and then that two weeks turned into five months, six months, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, not to be uh, uh be un- uh, desensitized to what's going on, right? Or not to say that people should have valid concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, but statistically and like the numbers i just think that i don't know if the actions called for you know should have taken place you know gyms gym been closed for five months um you know gymnastics places dance studios you know and some of the the rules seem a little contradicting right like yeah. you go to a restaurant Take you it. have to wear your mask while you walk to your table when you sit down you don't have to wear the mask um, some of the places out here, like, uh, like bars and things, they had to, in order to go to the bar, they would have to sit down and order food in order to drink as well. Um, so some of the things they, they were conflicting, you know? Yeah. Um, and then we have States around us like Connecticut they're they, you know, they're going, the gyms are open. Pennsylvania has gyms open. Um, New Jersey's gyms aren't open. Our gyms aren't open. But, you know, you go to the grocery store, we go uh, places like that, and they're crowded. Yeah. They're packed, you know, and, you know, you you touch things. You you don't know who's touching what. So people are touching things. People are there, you know, but other things can't function, you know. So it's it's weird how they – it's, you know, things people pick and choose, what can happen, what cannot happen. It's just just very interesting, and I just don't know if the economy – can withstand such a long pause in an influx of money. Yeah, you know, they just pretty much said, "Oh, this is not going to make money," and it's and it's not fair to uh, some of those business owners. You know what I mean? Yeah. I um, and and I'm again, like, I'm not trying to say that it's not real. Of course it is, but when you th- you know, if people like took a second to think of the amount of people that you personally know that may have gotten it. And then how many people you personally know how it passed from it, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you say, Oh, you know, I know a lot of people have passed from cancer. Yeah. I know we know of a few people who may have passed from heart failure. Mm-hmm. How many people do you know have passed from COVID? That's the thing. Okay. I, I believe it's extremely contagious and a lot of people do get it. And we could be sitting here. We might have it too, but as far as, you know, how <clears throat> it is i think that's the part that that is kind of confusing because um my mom is a nurse at a nursing home right so they they tested all of them and basically virtually all of them had it including my, my, my mom they didn't oh, know okay they had no symptoms whatsoever 
My mom didn't have anything. After they told her, she started like, oh, wait, am I sick? Am I? Then she started, <laughs> I think I got to double so, check. Yeah, let me check. But like, she was fine. And, and now she's fully recovered and everything. So I'm like, obviously, when there's something scary and new, we don't know about it. That that original two weeks was definitely warranted. Like, let, let's see. Let's see. Like, you know, the, the numbers are going up. Let's take right. a look. At what point, like, it's been, what, six months now? I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. At what point do you say, like, we can't live like this forever, right? Like, right, right. Eventually, because because everything kills people, like you just said, cancer. You got heart mm -hmm. right. right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and people true. people have the argument that you know, with this, like I can't spread cancer, right? Like I can't touch you or sneeze on you, and you're gonna get it, you know. But this, you know, it's more about us protecting one another. Where if I sneeze in your face, you would get it, type of thing. Yeah. And I understand that, but also as adults or people who you know have a conscious you should know better and be responsible enough to say look if i don't feel good yeah. i'm gonna stay home yeah, exactly. you know if if i if i have a runny nose i'm coughing let me go to the doctor get checked let's see what's going on yeah. and i'm not gonna go to work i'm gonna tell my boss i'm gonna tell whoever is in charge you know i, I think they've taken that responsibility aspect out of it and left it up to governors as if we're children and we can't you know Think on our yeah. Think on our own. You know it's, I, you know everyone has their own opinions on it. But I think the longer that this goes on, the more I'm like, it's it's interesting. You know, and we're going back to school in two weeks, and there's a lot of things in place that are, you know, they're interesting, to say the least. And I, I guess we'll see we'll see what's gonna happen there. You know. Yeah, it's uh, the whole thing's been wild. You know, I, I guess there's no right way to handle it because we've never been through it. But right, right. I don't, I don't. I don't think this. I don't think this is it. I don't think. Yeah, this is it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, this, the thing is that this affects every part of society, yeah. from the social aspect, <clears throat> right, to the business and the large corporations. Yeah. Large corporations will survive. Well, a good percentage of them, they will survive. Maybe large corporations that are operating in a red. Guess what? They were operating a red to begin with. They were going to go chapter 11 to begin with. But a lot of small businesses in many states, I'm not just talking Nassau County, Suffolk County, New York State, the small businesses, those small business owners are most affected by it because they can't open. They can't operate. And how do you maintain a lease? Because at the end of the day, they still have to pay that lease at the end of the month. Yeah. You could rent an apartment and you can get a waiver and say, okay, you don't have to pay rent for three months. Yeah. And also you don't get evicted. But when it comes to the lease, you don't pay that lease. See you later. Goodbye. It's over. I agree. Yeah. But basically, like, like Mike said, we have to be able to make our own choices because what if I'm willing to, to risk my health a little bit to be able to feed my family? If I have to choose one, well, do I want to feed my family? Do I want to take this risk? I'm, I may choose feeding feeding my family, you know. So it's, at least it gives you a choice to choose. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's it's live or die, you know. Um, I studied martial arts for 35 years, and for the 35 years, my professor always said to me, "When it comes down to it, somebody's trying to take the last breath of air from your body. You need to respond, and if that response is with deadly force, then so be it. Yeah. And that's the only time you should ever have to use deadly force." That's actually like a perfect segue. So you, uh, you say you, you did martial arts for 35 years, right? When, when did you get into bodybuilding? Um, you know, I always trained. I always had, you know, just like I have here at home, you know, a small gym set, you know, benching, you know, throughout high school and college, always in the gym training. But nothing to the extent or this level until it was possibly like probably around 2011 to 2012. And actually, at that time frame, you know, he was doing football, and he went from football, he was down in the weight room, and he was like, I don't know, pressing 315, 405 in high school, you know, senior year. So, and, it, you know, he this really led him towards that new development. It was a new door opening, a new phase of his life beckoning him. And as he moved into that arena, I shut down martial arts because I had my own school for about 10 years. Oh. So about 2011, I shut down my school. In 2012, you know, he was so much in depth with this. He met um, his first coach, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, who's actually competing in the Olympia 
uh, this year and competed last last year was Sean Clarita. And Sean, uh, which was his first coach back in like 2011, 2012, had him compete up in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. So we went up to Buffalo for his first competition. So the picture that he had posted on his Instagram, that picture was taken up in Buffalo like 2011, 2012, before I even thought about seriously getting into competition or bodybuilding. Which picture is that? Oh, uh, I just posted it uh, <laughs> like yesterday or the day before. It was the transformation picture. I, I think I've seen that one. And he was like, he was like heavy, right? Heavy set? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 242 yeah. pounds. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the latest picture up there. So, okay. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like two hundred and forty-two pounds of muscle. <laughs> I don't even look like the same person. He looks like a different person. <laughs> that's wild. Man. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so I, I think it was like shortly after we came back from Buffalo, and he won. Um, uh, he was doing. He was doing what? Team, he, team, uh, team. Team. It was actually. Uh, I don't know if you heard it. It's the IMBF. You know. Oh. You know who? The IMBF International. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Henry. Henry. You know Henry you'd have on there? Henry Jackson, yeah. He, he, yeah, he used to do the IMBF too. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, so it's like a, it was a natural organization. Yeah. I think I, I think that's like a great way to, to get into it, to see where your, where your genetics are at for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at such an early age, I'm actually glad he went that route. Mm -hmm. And as he, you know, continued that route, he had asked me, I think it was like 2012, what do you think? And I'm sitting on a couch watching football, eating my, you know, peanut uh, M&M's. You know, and playing Texas Hold'em online, and I go think about what he goes think about competing. I go, well, I'll get back to you on it. So I'm just sitting there, I'm throwing M and M's in my mouth and watching football. You know, so I guess after like five ten minutes, I said, you know what? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. That's crazy. <laughs> I was kind of wild. Um, what was like? Uh, did you have anybody you, you like look up to at, at the time? Because I felt like because of your age, I'm. I'm interested. Do you look up? Did you look to the like the guys your age, or like the guys from like <laughs> like, like the Sunday you know, like the Golden era? It, 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 it's 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 hard because you don't see bodybuilders my age, you know, in this age group bodybuilding anymore. You know, I'm coming in at, on the downside as they're leaving. I'm coming in. Yeah. You know, and so the, the people like the, that I've been the era. I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, like the era, like do, do you like the the golden era type type? Music or you know, you know, I, I love Ronnie Coleman. I think he's just a beast. You know, um, he's 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 very inspirational. But when I met Dexter, you know, that was that was in enlightening. I met Dexter down in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't. He didn't really. He came into bodybuilding after me. Yeah, so, so he's not gonna, You know what I mean? Yeah. So he he didn't really he doesn't have that uh that back history on it. Right, yeah, really yeah, like that back history of, of of the nineties guys or or the eighties guys. When he came into it, he he saw what I was doing. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? So he after going to shows he started seeing what was going on. And so, like, my guys became his type of guys, but he didn't, he, like, I have, I'm more of a little bit of a more of a historian than he would be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I didn't even say your age. Uh, how old are you, uh, Anthony? I just turned 60. That's dope. <laughs> I think that's the best physique I've ever seen at, at 60, uh, honestly. Like, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Like, like the, the skin is still tight, too. Because sometimes, you know, that like, like the glutes and hams, sometimes it, it doesn't look as tight, you know, the older you get. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all there. Like it, it's, it's, it's yeah, um, a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, you know, I, I think in bodybuilding, um, a lot of bodybuilders, I'd say probably nine out of ten bodybuilders mm -hmm. think they're not good enough. I mean, even at a pro level, always – because we criticize ourselves. We are the most critical people of our own physique. You know, we look at every little detail. We try to improve that. Maybe a little bit twist here. Maybe a little tighten here. Uh, maybe bring this up a little bit. I need bigger arms. I need bigger legs. I need to tighten my glutes. You know, we're always looking to, to do something 
to increase our performance and, and better ourselves. You ever notice the guy that think they look good don't look good? <laughs> yeah. The one yeah. at the gym in front of the mirror, you know, like, like you like, you don't, you know, you don't look at the guys. Or, or like sometimes, uh, I also coach clients, and sometimes I'll have somebody email me, "Hey, I want to be like on the Olympia stage." I'm like, "Okay, what have you done so far?" And like, oh, I've never competed. I'm like, "What? How about you? How about you take a step? Like, how about you want to compete first? First of all, you look like a competitor, then step on the stage. You know, a, a novice show something, and they'll go straight to the gun. I, I think I can be a pro in classic." And I see the pictures, and I'm kind of like, well, like you got, you know, what I'm saying you, you got to have. I, I I think what's changing now is, um, how old are you, Mike? I'm 29. Okay, so I'm, I'm turning 28, right? So when we started, right, when we started training. It wasn't cool to be a bodybuilder. It, it, like fitness wasn't like a, it wasn't mm-hmm. like a thing because social media wasn't big. So we were right, cool. we just loved to train. It was fun for us, right? Well, mm-hmm. right. I think these days people see like the the cool people, like wow. Look at Simeon and look at Bradley Martin, look at Larry. I want to be famous like that. So they're going into it like with this idea, like, let me make money and be famous. But that never crossed their minds. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. well, I, I started training before there was Instagram. Exactly. I, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, his videos will be put up on YouTube. Oh, yeah. When I, when I first yeah. started working out, I was, I was in 2007. Uh-huh. So 2007, I was playing football still. Yeah. And then I did my first show in 2010. So Instagram, I don't, I don't, I didn't get Instagram until 2014. Yeah, it, it yeah. Was, even after it came out, it wasn't popular, you know. No, no, no. The thing, and that, that was just never the goal. So it, it's hard for us to relate to that. Guys, be like, oh, what keeps you motivated? And I'm like, what? I, I don't need to to see something to motivate me. Like, it's I, I actually enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, right. yes, it's, it's like saying, well, what what motivates you to to go party? Like, this like, this. It doesn't need to be motivation all the time. You, you just, and, that, that's, and that's just it. Oh, yeah. oh it's Friday. I'm motivated. <laughs> so now you have guys that want to look a certain way, but they don't actually enjoy training. And that's going to be an uphill battle. If you don't enjoy the process, like not saying that we enjoy every workout, right? If you're on a diet mm-hmm. sometimes, the workouts can suck a little bit. But I mean, after we're done, we're still like, wow, I, I, I already got busy. So if you can't find joy in it, I think I think you're doing it for the wrong reasons, man. I, I really, that's- really do. That's why I think it's important to, uh, you know, a lot of people might disagree with this, but as he said, when I was 19, I did my first show mm-hmm. and it was in the IMBF. Yeah. And I did, I did that until I was 21 mm-hmm. and I turned pro quote unquote, right. In yeah. IMBF, I won my pro card in that organization. There you go. Um, but that's where I met Sean Clarita. He was an IMBF guy too. Wow. And when he did his first, two or three shows was an IBF. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, it's like you want something, but you need to build the foundation, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have to know how to train. Mm-hmm. You have to know how to diet. You have to know how to do cardio. Mm-hmm. Like th- there's a lot of mental aspects, you know, like going to the gym is the fun part. Exactly. But now you have to go to the gym while being in a deficit of calories. That's those things. Those technically like wouldn't go together. Right. Yeah. Because then the gym is more of a performance based thing. But now you're, you're doing a deficit of calories, so you underperform, but you have to find a way to still perform. Exactly. No, you know, and, and you have to do cardio. Like right? I say, we don't always disagree on stuff or agree on stuff, but this is one thing you always, I always agree on. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> and so, so now you also have to have time management skills, right? So you have to wake up in the morning, do your cardio, go to work or go to school or do both. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I was at a point in my, my, when I was getting my master's, I was going to work and going to school at the same time. Yeah. Then okay. still go to train at night. Sometimes I wouldn't get to till eight o'clock at night, mm-hmm. and I'm still waking up at five o'clock in the morning to do cardio. Right. So you have to have time management and do all these different things. Mm-hmm. But people want to jump the gun and take drugs right away, but they don't have the foundation of just knowing how to work out, train, yeah, man. and manage time. Right. So they skip that, and that's why we see I think so many people that they're here for a year or two, and then they're mm-hmm. out because they don't have the foundation. And honestly, like when you talk to some of these guys, it's like it, the information is not absorbing, right? Uh, uh, I've had, you know, a handful of people like message me, right? They'll be like, hey, do, do you coach? Do you do cycles? I'm like, I mean, yeah, of course, it's, it's part, of, part of the game. Okay, cool. Well, I only need that. I don't need help with my diet and training. Yeah. I'm like, okay, send me pictures. And send me, I'm like, oh, you definitely, you definitely need help with your diet and training because <laughs> <laughs> you could already look the part. Like, 
let, let's say if there was no no gear involved and he was training and dieting on an optimal level, you would look good, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So if, if there's nothing I'm seeing there, he, he don't he don't know how to diet and train, obviously. Right. So that's gonna that's not gonna really help me. So if I was, I can't take that kind of client because I I can't have him showing that like okay this is my coach Beatty and he's showing he's showing that that package you know what I'm saying it's like I can't, I can't condone that like I have no right. question what you eat or, or how you train this is it's just not gonna work so the whole thing is just is just it's crazy we went from, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a bad concept I think also because you will have I'm on a diet plan yeah. okay. <clears throat> so, which means I have a certain goal, and I'm, <clears throat> my my diet changes as my body changes. So, I may go a couple weeks, and I'll he'll do my my check in picks, and he'll see some either improvement or areas that need to be improved. Mm -hmm. So, my diet will change accordingly because it's a it's an oscillation. Okay, it's not direct like direct current, it's almost like us, you know, alternating current because you're going through peaks and valleys, up and lows, and until you're heading towards your target. And you don't really get towards that target until like the last two weeks that you're just finally right on point, yeah. that it's just like, boom, you're, you're heading in. So you'll, people will look at that and go, wow, that's really great. So what, do you, what does your meal plan look like? Can you send me a copy of your meal plan? No, it's not going to work for you. No it doesn't thing. work like that. Yeah. It, it you know? Of, actually, I want to ask you, uh, who's your coach? Who, who, who coaches you? Oh, no, no, no. You, you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, oh, Mike. Oh, I, I thought she was going. Oh, Mike coaches. Oh, dope. dope okay, I, okay, dope, dope. I, I, I was wondering. Oh, so he got you into it, and then he, he coaches you too. I've had him as a coach from the beginning. Oh, Eight years cool. now. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to assume you, you also coach like other clients, right? For me? Yeah. Yeah, but okay. I, I'm not, I would never say that it's something that is my favorite thing to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it, it, it's like, especially the, the more higher level clients you get, it's kind of hard to fight back and forth. And yeah, it's, it's not even that. It, it, for me, which, which I'm sure you can relate to, and I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to, but I don't know. All right, so you work, you told me you work with Compton? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, okay, well, all right. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If Justin, you, you start initially working with Justin. Justin says, I want to check in two times a week. Mm -hmm. How many times a week are you going to check in with him? Twice. All right. If Justin says to you, do X, Y, and Z, what are you going to do? I'm going to just get it done. Yeah. Right. But most people what, I, people. what I find with a lot of people – and it, it probably goes back to what we're talking about, about Instagram, mm -hmm. is I, I have, especially, I, I have girls, I've had girls DM me. Uh -huh. They'll send me a picture of another girl. I want to look like this. Uh, in my head, I'm like, one, you have no idea what she's doing, like, or what she takes. Mm -hmm. Two, you don't know how, how long she's been working out for. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, people have these outlandish goals, right? I want to look like this in this much time mm -hmm. and and i tell people like building muscle is not as easy as you think it is mm -hmm. not not even close so not as easy as you think it is uh, on time those same people sometimes they don't want to do stuff you'll be like do uh 50 minutes of cardio oh but you know it's busy yeah. you right goals. and on that time. comes down to the time management portion right yeah <laughs> so so that's what i'm saying these people you see on instagram especially the ones with that are higher level right mm -hmm they have a lot of time to do their cardio and a lot of time to do their training. Yeah. And they've been doing it for years. Like I tell people, I've been training since 2007. That's 13 years. So and I'm 29 years old. Yeah. He's been training for eight years. You've probably been training for at least 10 years, right? Yeah. So someone looks at you and says, I want to look like you. If you said, oh, but I've been doing this for 10 years, mm -hmm. they want it in five months. Exactly. Tomorrow. You know? So it's tough sometimes to deal with these people because right. I'm like, send me a check-in. You And to me, in my opinion, this is the thing. If the check-in is the easiest part, right? All you have to do is send pictures and send me your weight. Tell me how you're feeling. How's your appetite doing? How's your digestion? If you can't do that easy part, how can you be doing the hard stuff, the cardio, the diet part? You, you, how do you cook six meals a day, have time to do that, but you can't send me pictures? 
it's, it's, it's that simple. And it's funny because uh, those people that, that say, okay, my, my ultimate goal is to be a pro, right? And let's yeah. say in a couple years. I always say, okay, check this out. If you have great, great genetics, top genetics, it's a 10 year journey. <laughs> right, yeah. No way, how is it gonna be? I'm like, trust me, if you have bad genetics, you're not turning pro. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. great genetics, yeah. it's a 10 year journey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is maybe uh, once every 10, five, 10 years, you have like a Phil Heath or um, like a, a Cody, like that, that turns pro super. Right. Young. But I don't know, right. mm-hmm. training when he was like 12. So I guess it was kind of like a 10 year journey still, right? Yeah, I mean, he won team nationals three times before he, you know? So it's, but I always tell them 10, nobody wants to hear 10 years, but I'm like, no. it's the truth. I, um, I started training, um, I mean, I, I was I was messing around ways, but seriously training, like as a bodybuilder, I want to say like 18. And I turned 28 this year. So it's already been, it's already been 10 years, but right, right. you don't look at it like that because you enjoy it. So it's not like you're, Mm-hmm. Like in the calendar, oh my god, I still don't have my pro card. It's been right. it's, it's, it's not it's like and, and and that's just it. So so let me ask you a question. When you someone that I highly respect in this field, mm-hmm. okay, is Dexter Jackson. Yeah. Okay, because he's one of the uh most senior in the bodybuilding world. Mm-hmm. And he's been doing it for what, thirty years? He's an Olympia like twenty times. At a high level. So, yeah, at yeah. high level. So, and and how many times has he actually won the Olympics? Uh, was it 08? 08, was yeah. it? Okay. So, you know, you've got to think about it that you're climbing Mount Everest every year. Yeah. And maybe one year you'll get to the peak. Wow. And that, so just think about that. You're going to climb Mount Everest every year. What does it take to climb? Yeah. And it's it's a very slow climb, okay. And he's been consistent, and that's the level that's required in this type of art. I call it an art because I come from an art world. I come from martial arts, and it's a level. After thirty five years, I'm saying, okay, you cannot be a master in this and a master in that. You can have qualities that can you can do here, and your qualities. And so, but you're a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. If you really want to focus and become a master, this is what you need to do. You need to dedicate this in your mind for however long it takes for you to get there. And if you and when you get there, the question is, can you do it again? Exactly. So uh, to, to, uh, talking about uh, Dexter, right? So uh, I train at Gold's Venice, you know, like not all the time, but, you know, whenever I feel like driving there. And uh, a lot of people think Dexter doesn't train hard for some reason. Uh, I don't know where, where they get that from. But <clears> if <you're, laughs> he trains hard. Some people say he trains yeah. Now I wouldn't even say light. Like when he does free weights, he doesn't go heavy. But when he does the machines, they'll still put, you know, three, three and a quarter plates on the Smith machine and still rep that. Um, when he does the machines, he stacks every machine. He feels like, like he he's still moving weight. Like he, he's doing it in a way that he won't get injured. That's why he only goes heavy with the machines. But yeah, still training hard. Yep. Drenched in sweat, sweat dripping everywhere. Also, a lot of people don't realize when you take five minutes rest between sets, you know you'll be able to use more uh, more weight. But he's literally he'll wait. You know, Charles to change the weight and he'll go right back. So we're talking about thirty seconds rest. So it's mm-hmm. going to be a, a, a lot. The weight is going to feel uh, harder. So. People think, you know, he doesn't train hard, but that's just... He does. You can't step on that stage, Olympia stage, and be in top 10 unless you're busting it out. Simple. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what, what genes you have, the genetics you have. It's not going to happen. You have no. to. And you you he, have to. He literally leaves home for like six months, right? Just Because he, he don't even live here. He yeah. literally comes out here just to stay. So that's right. a big thing, but... Uh, well, speaking of training, um, what's your training style like? Because um, like I'm I'm 27 and my my, my elbows and knees already hurt. So like, do you, do you have a lot of any pains in you? Do you train heavy? For me or him? No, you. Oh, uh, um, I think I've gone through different transitions mm-hmm. where um I have arthritis in my toe, okay. you know, um, so that caused me some pain. I couldn't do cardio the way I wanted to and the, the, the fortunate thing here is at the same time I was experiencing that the gyms closed mm-hmm. 
So for me, I, I love the stand master. That is that right there is is the cup. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the golden cup. It's between water and the stand master. If you can do it thirty to forty minutes, three to four times a week, and drinking a gallon of water, I, I'm telling you, your longevity increases. Okay. Um. And not to say that you can't do anything and everything else, you know, with within reason, you know, um, just not overstimulating, doing things that are out of control or anything like that. You have to look at everything at a certain point and go, okay, I can do this, this, and this, a little of this, a little of that. I can have a little of this. I can have a little of that. But when you're in prep, mm -hmm. all that goes to the side, yeah. you know. So this is this is what you need to do. And this is what you need to focus on. So you find other ways. So at times, like I, he wants to do the hack squat. His hack squats are crazy. Mm -hmm. Only a madman does those hack squats. I even look at him and go, "Dude, it, it, it's killing me." Because I get on there, and um, a good day, I can get three plates mm -hmm. on a really good day. And it really depends on the hack squat, and it depends on where. Because I have found hack squats where I can actually work. Yeah. And then I find hack squats where I can't even put a plate on it because my knees are so bad. I'm not strong on a, on a hack squat either. I think it's the knees. You got to have really good knees for that. You have to have good knees. Yeah. You have to get good knees. I'm not, sometimes I try to pull my feet all the way up on it. But yeah. I've never been – like the regular squat I'm strong on because I can like kind of get my hips down better. But, but yeah. Yeah, but – <can't> <laughs> it, it's, it's a but, technique. But there's, but there's also – there could be an argument towards that. Uh -huh. So – the argument to that would be when you're sticking your – when you're doing your squats, right, you're pushing your hips back, sticking your butt out. Yeah. Your butt and hamstrings are doing the squat. A lot, a lot of it, yeah. A lot, a lot of butt and hamstring, right? A lot of glutes and hamstring. Let's be more technical, right? So if you need to have better quads – Then you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Then you should – right. Exactly. So my, my, a hack – happen to be – my quads happen to overpower my glutes and hams. So it is not for me. It's not a bad thing, but a lot of people, okay, a lot of people do that and like right. they have strong squats, but no quads and right, that's not a good thing. You probably shouldn't. You, probably you, squat. you can see it with powerlifters right off the bat, right? They you can squat a lot and then they don't have big legs. Mm -hmm. big so in a in a way though, the the hack squat could be almost dummy proof, right? You take your feet, you put them down low, mm -hmm. you have a lot of knee flexion, meaning. You know, everyone says when we're growing up, it's right. Like, don't let your knees go over your toes. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you really want to hit the quads, they have to, right? Exactly. Um, so I think a big thing, and and we'll work on it when he's done with this more. But for me, what I realized is mobility is very important. Mm -hmm. but so, well, for, for everything, for right? Everything. Like you so, squats, hack squats, press. You know it. I think the more mobile and flexible you are, the more you take yes. the risk of injury, right? Yes, susceptible to injury. Yeah, good point. You know, like, think about all the pec tears we see. A lot of it. The shoulder injuries, you know, mm -hmm. the people with knee pain. Um, you, you saw guys, like, you saw Ronnie Coleman, Flex Wheeler, Kai. They could do splits, right? Good point. There's some guys that they can't even touch their toes. And but you have 300-pound guys that just splits. We never seen Flex or Kai get injured. I mean, Ronnie never had, like, an injury as far as tightness. He, he just had, like, a back. back Spinal injury. But he also squatted 800 pounds. Yeah. Right. But if you look at his form when he did that, he was low. He was. He was. Yeah, he was. So he had good knee flexion. For sure. For sure. Think about going 800 pounds that deep like he did. People would crumble. And he was doing, like, high bar squats. His knees were coming, coming forward. Right. But right. Exactly. Hard. So – I think, you know, there's a lot of things that people can do to work on their flexibility that they want to get into a thing like a hack squat. They could, uh, benefit from it for their quads. I see a lot of people, you know, they, they go on the, um, you know what the V squat is? The V squat? The V squat. It's like a machine. Connected. It looks, people call it a hack squat, but it's not the hack squat. Oh, you, you lean forward? And they face the pad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they stick their butt, butt, their butt this way. Yeah. And their back's like bent. They're like this. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm like you got this all glutes and hands. That's the thing, and in general, like 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 a free weight squat, honestly, it's not it's it's not the best quad builder. I think it's an overall lower body builder. Okay. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. but let's say if you have if you have bad quads, and let's say decent hands and glutes, 
then he, he probably he probably don't need to be doing a lot of back squats. You know what I'm saying? Probably don't. Yeah, I, I think I think like back squats. So I, like if you're coming, if you're new, right? So say your first five, ten years of bodybuilding, mm-hmm. do you should be doing squats. But I think it's because you said like you need the overall development, mm-hmm. overall mass. But I also think that free weights, squats, deadlifts, they build a mindset. Mm-hmm. So like. There has to be a certain amount of aggression to be able to squat four, pa- four plates, mm-hmm. five plates, right? Mm-hmm. So when you can have that aggression and build that mindset to be able to attack weight like that, when you go to something like a leg press or a hack squat, that's no, that's no problem. Easy, yeah. Easy. You know what I mean? So I do think that foundation of building in a, a level of aggression, mm-hmm. you know, I think that will translate over. It does. It does. You have to think – that number one, it's possible, and just say, well, you know what, the pain, I'm just going to disseminate the pain, and I'm not going to worry about it, I'm just going to get it done. And through repetition, you'll get it done. But it all goes right back to, number one, having that foundation. Where is your foundation? Because if you want to build something, you need to build it on a strong foundation. Otherwise, it's just going to crumble all the time. Do do you use a, a, a more machines than free weights, or or do you are you a free weight kind of guy? I I like both. Um, I right now I'll move away from free weights simply because you know I don't want any type of injury two or three weeks out. Yeah. You know, so like uh, we were sitting just uh, two days ago, I was pressing three fifteen on a Smith machine. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I still have the, the, the drive to hit that 315. Mm-hmm. But, you see, now the difference between a regular press and a Smith machine, now I have stability. Yeah. I'll still get my 315, but with the stability that's necessary to make sure I can recover. Exactly. Whereas if I did the 315 on just a free press, you know, there's always that possibility in your back of your mind because I've seen so many people get injured you know, when they're so close. So, okay, so, so basically, you, you train smart. You, you, you do what you know. You have to. But uh, you, you don't do any, you don't go for any PRs. You're not going for any. Uh, no, no not, not, at, not at this stage. Not at this stage. He, he I have to, but sometimes I have to rein him in, though. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Because, you, um, uh, did, you, did you play uh, sports? Yeah, I played basketball and, and football in high school. high school. Okay, so, so the same thing here. I played football. Um, so we, we are more free weight people yeah. and I've, and I've been hounded about it by my coach. Yeah. Um, like he, he, he believes in machines and things like that. Um, but, uh, sometimes like I'll have to tell him like, all right, like we're not going to go to 315. Like let's do two sets of 225. Like, are you warm? Are you sure? Are you sure you're warm? Like, t- you know, something like that. Like. Cause he'll want, he'll want to go, you know, you know, like once you get in the gym, you, the blood starts flowing, you start tweaking a little bit. You can't turn it off yet. Yeah. 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 Let me take it easy today. I'm not feeling good. And once you get in there. Yeah. Right. And you never want to do that either. You don't want to have that mentality that I'm not feeling good or like I'm not up to par or something like that. You want to get in there. You want to get something done. See, you know? So I'm like that, that. you know, some, some people don't I'm, I'm ready to go and he's pulling me back and like, yeah, just, this, this is like, you know, step back a little bit. You know, let's go for a little bit of higher volume over here and a little bit less of the weight. So, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. You know, and, and it works. It works. It, it still works. I, I guess sometimes you got to be smart. It's like, but some people don't get that mindset. Like, uh, even, even with Ronnie, like the situation he's in right now, like, uh, you know, obviously, like, it will be best for him to stop training. But, I mean, it's it's the mindset we have. Like, it's like, how do you yes. – what else, what, else, what else can you do? Like, yeah. He's going to work. He, he that, that's also, you know, you know, people talk about mental health and sanity mm-hmm. or, you know, you could even talk about the quarantine with this, right? Like that's something that's keeping him sane. Okay. Yes. You know, it's keeping him alive. It's keeping him happy, yeah. you know? And I think that's the difference. Again, when we go back to talking about the Instagram bodybuilders, we do this because we love it. That's it. Take the Instagram away, take the YouTube away, take the Facebook away. Take the competing aspect away. Take the gyms away. We're still going to find a way. We're going to find a way. Where, where, mm-hmm. so it keeps us safe. Look, if, so if I'll tell you this. If some of us didn't go to the gym, mm-hmm. 
we wouldn't be in society. You know, we'd be bouncing <laughs> off the walls. You know, so it, we needed some of us. Exactly, and you know what's funny? When quarantine first started, I wasn't thinking about no competitions. I didn't care about that. I'm just like, I need the gym for me. I, I, I didn't right. care how I looked. I, I wasn't like, I, I wanted to look a certain way. Honestly, I was just, I just need the gym. Like, it, it wasn't com- com- competition wise. It wasn't social media. It wasn't even physical appearance. At the, at the time, you know, I, I was like kind of like a, I was going to like a like a break, you know what I'm saying, like a, like a revamp. So I wasn't really like looking that good and I didn't care how I looked. I just needed to train. That's all I did. Right. I was going to find a way to train. I was looking up equipment. Okay, I got to find a way. So it's, that's how you know it's mental, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. My show is going to get canceled. I'm like, I don't care about the shows, man. I just I just need to gym. I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing that kind of like twisted me a little bit because – um, I had a show in June, then it was July, had Universe, and then, so basically, three of my shows got canceled well, the, before we before we locked in. If you're already prepping, that, that would suck. If you're already, like, midway prep. Yeah, would... yeah. You know, I saw him prep January 24th, but it, it, here's the other thing. It's a mindset. So, legitimately, on paper, I started prep on the 24th, but two weeks before, my mind is already in prep. Yeah. Knowing that this is what I have to do at this particular point in time, this is the goal switch that you're gonna lock it in. So I'm already in prep two weeks out. So just think about January first. I'm saying, okay, I'm not gonna have that piece of cake. I'm not gonna have that pie. I'm not gonna have that turkey because yeah. I'm going into prep. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting then, and here we are, September coming into September. That's you know, so that's a long prep. But it's not something I'm not accustomed to because that was my first prep was 42 weeks. Oh, uh, oh yeah, because you started heavier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's not something I'm not accustomed to. We just have to re yeah, just, do it again. I want to ask, so speaking of your diet, um, so okay, so for, for you to put on muscle, right, at, at your age, do you bulk? Do you believe in bulking, cut, like cutting, or do you kind of just stay lean all the time? Um. Well, you know what? Let, let me. I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah, let me get this. <laughs> he. He. He's go. All right. So I'm gonna. I'm breaking down for you. So when he did his first show, mm-hmm. he was 52. Wow. Like it was in 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, and he went from 240 to 167. Wow. Okay. Man. It competed as a. It was a. It was a middleweight in the IMBF at that time. It was you know, all natural, right? Then from there, he did. He, he got his pro card, WBF. He did wow. one of their pro shows over there, mm-hmm. um, and it was a, he. He came down about the same weight, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, then the following year, he did the MPC, and you know that first year, big jump, right? Yeah. So he got up. He uh, in that that light show, heavy. he it was a light heavyweight, so about one ninety four. That's a that's a lot of muscle. That's a lot of muscle. Yeah. yeah. So so that was a big jump. But he learned quick. So those first few years, um, say like the first five, mm-hmm. his off season, he would kind of get back to a not so pretty weight. Yeah. You know, like a two, like a two, yeah, like a two twenty, two thirty, right? Uh-huh. But this last like two years, he's been very. I would say he's been very on top of his his look. So I'll tell you something. Right now, this morning, what did you weigh in at this morning? Two hundred five. Two hundred five. Two hundred five. You know what he started weight at? His prep at in January twenty fourth. How much? Two eleven. Oh, oh, so he was lean the whole year. Yeah. So literally, this all we've seen, and it's pretty wild. Like he's just gotten harder and harder and fuller and harder and harder. So he he's like the opposite of a lot of people. So in the off season, he'll eat like two three meals. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of like. It's light, light on the protein, very, very light, maybe two, three meals of protein, two, probably more, very light, and then a lot, and he'll do cardio. He keeps cardio in four or five days a week, 30, 40 minutes every day. That's the, that's the secret. And that's the off-season. So, that's what so, I said, Stairmaster. Yeah, so, he, and he, which, which I think anybody who's done the Stairmaster can say that's the most demanding form of cardio. Yeah. yeah. Right? You pick the Stairmaster, you pick the bike, or you pick the treadmill, which one's going to take the most out of you? By far, stay Right. Yeah. So in the off season, he'll he'll keep two three meals, and then he'll he'll do his stairmaster, you know. Um. But then once prep starts, those meals I bump them right to five. 
-hmm. Every meal has protein in it. Um, I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. So, you know what? I'll actually, I'll even tell you, I'll give you the, uh, the, the diet. Uh -huh. Um, but every, every meal has pro Oh, and in the off season, no gear. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, so it's kind of cool because it's like the opposite of everybody else. Yeah. So he, and I, and I'm, and I'm an advocate of, of the blood work too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, try to make sure everything is good. Yeah. So once the prep starts, it's like, we can, we can have some fun mm -hmm. because he's been like cleaned out. Desensitized, so, like your body. Yeah. So actually doing blood work before we even start the prep. There we go. To make sure that we are in the right frame. And all and yeah. yeah. You want to hear something funny? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So um, I was <laughs> getting ready to do the blood work, and I had creamer, you know, that morning in my coffee. Yeah. So what happened was I we went to do get the blood work done. And come back and what was high? His, his fasting glucose, his fasting blood sugars. From the creamer. From the creamer. It was high. Like non-sugar creamer, right? No. No, it had sugar. Oh, it had Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. But but I get the blood work back mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm like, there's there's some there's an issue here, right? I'm like, either you're gonna be a diabetic, mm -hmm. something's wrong, or you did something and I need to know. <laughs> so I'm like so I'm like, what did you do? Like, I'm like, think about it. He, I'm like, what'd you have before? He's like, coffee. I'm like, all right, would you have coffee? He's like, sure. I'm like, how much do you have? So I put this shit on the scale and measure it on the scale. Shit comes out to like 40 grams of sugar. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because like, I feel like when you measure protein, you, put, you, you probably usually need more. But when you, when you measure like sauces and stuff, it's way less. You're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Dude, it was only for like, it was only for like six ounces. It's it's crazy how it adds up though. Adds up. So so I was like, you know what? Buy, I wanted to buy a, buy a, a glucose monitor. Yeah. So I had him check it three more times every morning for the next few days, mm -hmm. and no creamer. I'm like, you gotta take that shit and cut it out. No creamer. See what happens, and then obviously it comes back normal. Yeah. And I, I was like, dude, you're gonna you're, you're gonna be a diabetic. <laughs> the thing is. You have to have someone like your coach who's going to look at those little things. Because cause it's impossible to, to, to be putting in the work and thinking about a million things at a time. So I always say even coaches have coaches. Like, yeah, and, and that's it. Yeah. You, you, you can't do everything at once. Like if you're a doctor or a surgeon, you're not going to sit there and give yourself surgery. You need somebody else. Exactly. I said that to his coach one day. I go, listen, you know, you could be a brain session, but trust me. If you need a brain surgery, it's not like you're going to give it to yourself. You're going to have a brain surgeon do it for you. So that's the eye that you need. I think it's important for, for uh, bodybuilders to have a uh, blood glu uh, glucose monitor and a uh, blood pressure band at home. Just, just yeah. Keep an eye. So I, yeah. I don't use it often, but every once in a while, I check just to, just to see. You, you never know, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, a lot of us eat so many carbs, and then we cut it down, and we're doing, we're doing all this stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's important, too, because even even the, the growth hormone sensit uh, desensitizes you a little bit, too. You, got, like, blood, blood sugar. you know? Sure. Blood sugar. Right, so, you know, it's it's important to know, like, what's going on. And that's the thing, like, when, you, when you're doing a prep with somebody and you're starting off, mm -hmm. if you have all these variables that you don't know, how do you – can you pull the prep off? Yeah, I'm not going to say you can't. Mm -hmm. But, dude, you have people like – your cholesterol's messed up. Your A1C is messed up. Your your blood glucose is messed up, and then you're gonna try to feed them things. You don't even know what's going on. And the other thing is, a lot of people at the, at the beginning, they're not even honest with themselves. So how could they be honest with their coach? No. You know, if you ask them, send me a list of supplements that you're taking. Oh, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E. You're taking a multivitamin. Uh, sometimes. Uh, what else? Oh, well, that's it. Meanwhile, you know, something's wrong. And, and even with the blasting stuff, you know, you have, like say you get a new guy for prep, right? Like, oh, that wants to prep with you, but they've already been running everything under the sun. It's like you have no sensitivity to that anything anymore. The, the crazy part is, you know how much kind have, have left me because I, I made them come off? They don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Your show was four months away. Like, we can't just keep running. I'm like, now nah, we, we got to come off at least for a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't want to hear that. Like the last thing they want to hear is the coach telling them to come on. They, 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 they hate it. But what you want me to do? Just have you run stuff for just 
for, 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 for 12 months. Like, and, 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 and you know, you're absolutely right because there's no growth. If you, if you came off for a couple months, you give your body an opportunity to grow naturally. Mm-hmm. So when you do introduce it, there is a receptor to it. It actually was, and that's where you see the change. I, I even, even, even him. I have to tell him sometimes. I'm like, you gotta lay off the caffeine. Yeah. Exactly. Even things like that, right? Like, so you, 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 you might have a client. You have a client come to you drinking four cups of coffee a day. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, so now we Five. can't even think about. <laughs> you can't even think about using like caffeine as a fat burner. No. You know. Because I like say like with cardio, I'll be like, all right, like let's add in 200 milligrams of caffeine, and you know maybe we'll do some yohimbi with that with cardio, right? Yeah. If you have somebody that already does 500 milligrams of caffeine, well, that doesn't do anything for them. There's no way to go from there. So I'm like, yeah, you have to take a break from the pre-workout. You have to take a break from the caffeine. You have to take a break from yep. the fat burners. Yep. I think you need to take a break from everything. So with him, when I get him and you know, the off season's over and he's only eating two meals a day and doing 30, 30 minutes of cardio a day, 40 minutes of cardio a day and off of things mm-hmm. to add things in to add food. It's like, Oh wow. I get a response. That, like, Something's going to happen. Like, like, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like for me in the, let's say in the past, what that's 2018, let's say in the past two years, my, my gains were kind of slowing down, right? Kind of slowing down. It was like, huh, I, I, I'm like, am I reaching my, my limit? What's going on? I'm, I'm still young. Why, why am I hitting this wall? And uh, last year, May, so May 2019, I had pneumonia. So I, I went to the, hopefully it wasn't COVID for all. It could be COVID for all. You know. <laughs> it was early. It was early. It was early. <laughs> a year early. So I, I, I'm in the hospital. Uh, I was feeling a little tired, whatever. Oh, I'm tired. I would work out. Like, I, I still have my YouTube video. I'm on a video talking about, it sounds like I'm making an excuse. I'm like, I'm not feeling this today. I, I don't know why. I'm just the energy not there, whatever. And then it came to a halt. It came to, I would do a set of curls and I couldn't breathe. I'm like, okay, something wrong. I go to ER yeah. or whatever. Long story short, I go to ER. They say both my lungs are f- full of fluid. So that they induce me into a coma. I wake up out of this coma five days later. And I was, I was getting ready for the USA during this time. So I wake up from the coma. They're like, hey, uh, do you know where you are? I'm looking around. I'm like, uh, nah. Do you know what? They was like, do you know what uh, year it is? I'm like, ah. Uh. And I, it's funny because I actually guess I'm like uh, 2019. They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. At least, at least I got that. <laughs> They're like, well, my, like you, you're like completely lost. Like five days is a long time to have no activity. Yeah. So long story short, I lost all my games, whatever the case is. From that point on to to literally right now, I made some of the best games I ever made. My body was so sensitive because I right. like I literally had to learn how to walk again. I wasn't eating anything. I mean, I, I didn't eat anything for five days, right? So. Like yeah. So desensitized. I thought I was like, I, I mean, so sensitive because for so long I was kind of just pushing, 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 pushing. Small little break, push, push, push. So obviously, uh, I wasn't on any gear literally from, I guess that's May 2019 to let's say six weeks ago. So I don't even know how long that is. But over almost, here, almost a year. Yeah. 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 So um, a little over. So imagine how, how I'm responding. I'm, I'm like fresh every day. Yeah. Hey, I see change. Literally, every, every people at the gym, like every single day, I'm changing. Which yeah. Is, so like, but that um, that's what we were talking about earlier with the foundation. So for a full year, you found it in your head to still train, still do your diet, still do what you had to do. That other stuff is the icing on the cake. Exactly. So now it's gonna just take you that much higher because you have all this already. Exactly. You know what's you know? got a good strong foundation. If you go to my Instagram, I was hitting PRs. <laughs> I was hitting PRs, Natty. And then, yeah. and then I started going to a, like a, a like this private gym because you know all the gyms closed for COVID. So these people they don't know me, right? So yeah, I see me, they don't know what I used to look like before. So they see me, they're like, Yo, "Bro, like, what, what are you on?" I'm like, "Nothing." And they're like, "Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> man, like, no, are you serious?" I'm like, I, "Like, I, there's no reason." Honestly, I'm like, I, I know you're not gonna believe me. I'm not on nothing, but I, I don't know what to tell you. So now uh, rebound. Like, yeah. So now I'm back on. They're like, "Oh, I, I think." I think he, he might, be, might have been telling the truth. I'm like, but it, it, it doesn't work how people think it works. Like, you'll be surprised yeah. how much muscle and strength you can build. It, mm-hmm. it's kind of, honestly, to be honest, I didn't even know that that, that was possible. It's a, it's a PR off year. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. your body has, has done it before. So it's like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. But yeah, um, I want to ask also, uh, 
do you get any like uh, work done to like keep yourself like uh, and do you feel like a chiropractor, deep tissue massage? For Anthony? Um, actually, I have seen a chiropractor on occasion. Um, haven't seen a chiropractor I'd say in the last three four months simply because he started to introduce stretching after our workout. So by stretching after the workout, it actually helps to loosen me up a little bit. So now I have a little bit more flexibility and it also increases my circulation. Okay. So I've, I've not had to go see the chiropractor, which is a good thing, knock on wood for that. Yeah. But in the past, there are times when I was, you know, I'm doing deadlifts four or five and I'm trying to get, you know, a, another plate on there. And all of a sudden I go, oops. No, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> and I go, oh, shit, I got to go see this guy tomorrow because I'm done, you know, and everything is out of whack. So I'll go through another adjustment, and then maybe like five, six weeks later, I'll revisit that four or five on a deadlift. But, you know, the thing for me is I listen to my body, and it, I know when something's right, and I'm in tune. And I can hit it, and I know when something is not right, and I go, no, nah, not today. It ain't, ain't going to happen today. How about the massage? Do you get any, like, deep tissue work, anything like that? I've seen so many people doing deep tissue massages and, and rubs and everything like that. I'm sure it works. It hurts, doesn't it? I, I just – I don't have time. <laughs> you know, it's it, – you still – I'm still working 50 hours a week, mm -hmm. still doing – massive amount of cardio and still running a household you know so i'm all over the place you know at the same time so i don't have time to take yeah. i think that's a luxury yeah. it's nice to have and i probably would do something like that when i'm not in prep yeah and i always have something to do like you, you gotta have just extra income lying around because I, yeah as expensive as bodybuilding is you can't be chalking up 120 dollars Every week for oh. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. And then, then go ahead, but also for me, like it's so uncomfortable, man. It's so uncomfortable, bro. Oh. Like, I, I can't. I don't want to do that. You know, he's used he's used a roller on me. Uh, I tell you, I swear, I'm gonna die sometimes when, when I felt it, especially in my like right quad. That's where I feel it the most. Leg. You know, he used a roller on there, like dude, that's a that's a leg. You know, <laughs> that. Remember, that's a leg. <laughs> it's attached to a body, you know, and he's going on it. But the one thing I must say, uh, what's that bubble that you used? Oh, the, the cross ball? Uh, oh, the cupping? The cupping. He's used the cupping on me a few times, and that's help. If I had to pay for it, I probably wouldn't do it because I haven't done it. But he's actually used it on me, and it has helped. So I would definitely continue to do something like that. I, I never tried that one. but um, So, okay. if Okay, so my goal is when I'm 60, I want to look like you, right? What's, <laughs> what, what's the best advice you could give me for longevity for me to be able to continue doing this till I'm 60? I, I'd say three things. One, water content. Okay. You've got to have at least a gallon of water a day, minimum. I haven't had water this whole, this whole interview. Yeah, uh, you, you, a minimum a gallon a day. He's got me up to almost two gallons. Oh yeah, yeah my okay, and that's beyond prep. So outside of prep, I would say definitely water, water, water. Mm -hmm. Um, cardio definitely helps. It doesn't matter what kind of cardio you're doing, as long as you're actually doing some level of um oh, activity. To get your heart rate going so you can go out and walk my wife goes out and she walks three miles a day sometimes she's if she's stressed mm -hmm. she'll go out and do another three miles you know so you know what she goes out for a second three miles i go oh she's stressing now that's it leave her alone you know but everybody needs that to to spend that alone time spend that time to just focus and rejuvenate you know um and really, it's just stress is good. It's like gravity. It's like lifting weights. So it's it, it's just not excessive to the point where it's you're going to go ballistic. Exactly. So certain levels of stress is good to keep your mind tuned. Um, 
But I, I think all in all, it's a quality of life, not an environment which is over stressful. Um, it's not an environment where you're, you're, you're hitting weights heavy. Every time you go to the gym, you're doing heavy because you'll never survive for a long period of time as far as longevity is concerned. You've got to look at it and you've got to quantify it, you know, and look at the quality of it, the quality of the workout. So sometimes you may want to go in there. You can be in there for two hours. Sometimes you'll be there an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, but it depends on the type of workout that you're doing. You know, so it, everything is within a cycle, and everything has a purpose and a meaning. Okay. So I, I already had you guys on for a while. Though. I don't want to hold you guys too much longer, but I want to ask who you guys got your money on for the uh, Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's back. Yeah. He he he's back. Yeah. You know, when when you turn around, and go um, unfinished business. Yeah, you know, but here's the thing, okay? And I'll, I'm gonna give it give it to him next. If 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 he didn't come back, it was gonna be an open field. Yeah. And the reason why I say it was gonna be an open field because Dexter could have walked in there and taken it again. Yeah, you okay? Um, because because you don't know where these guys are training. Okay, and he's going to break it down for you because some of them are international and they can't get here any longer because we shut the borders to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, like Iran, Iraq, uh, Kuwait. Okay, they, you can't come compete from over there. So that cuts out a couple of guys right there. I've been hearing they they working on some tricks. Uh, I'm hearing uh, Big Ramy is working on some tricks. You know, I don't know how he's going to do it. They going to sneak, sneak in. <laughs> they going to sneak in. <laughs> but like... I've been hearing the same with Bonac, but Bonac saying he's going to do it. I, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they, they, it's like they're finding some loopholes. Hopefully, I, I hope everybody's there, but... They're going to be down El Paso crossing the border. <laughs> <laughs> like, it seems like everybody's prepping saying they're going to do it, so... Hey, yeah, I yeah. Gonna, how that's gonna you know, so, so, so the, the gym thing, mm -hmm. the decrease in international travel and the restrictions... You may not find some of the guys who would be normally in the top five in there, so it kind of opens up the field. Now, the whole top five, besides Brandon, is four, right? Yeah. So, uh, so it was Brandon, Hottie was Hottie and Bonet, the second two or three, right? They're both foreign. Yeah. Who got fourth? Was, was it uh, was it Dexter? No. I think Dexter got fifth. Who got fourth? Kukla? Well, hot, oh, regardless. Ro Roly, right? Ro so, so Roly, Bonac, mm -hmm. Hottie, Rami. Mm -hmm. Those God. those are big games. Oh, and, and then you have to remember, Brandon usually goes to Kuwait to train and then comes back. He's not going to be able to – he might go to Dubai instead, something like that. Right. So, like, all, everyone's plans are, you know, they're in shambles. And, yeah. and as of right now – Vegas isn't even fully open. No, this, this is all crazy, man. Do you understand? Like, so they might, who knows? They might have to put it in Florida just like they do with every other show. Well, they might have to put it in Florida. And what, what's his name? Uh, Samson? Samson? Right? He, he's in he, he, couldn't, he couldn't get to Tampa. Mm -hmm. So he was, what do you go to, Kuwait? Or well, uh, he, he went, he's, in, he's in South Korea, I believe, doing, like, trying to do that show, but. He's like locked in a room, like. Bro, yeah, he was like crazy. in quarantine. Two weeks in quarantine. So right. think about it. You have you have a bunch of guys that are coming from overseas that make up our top ten. It is an open field. Like if for Phil Heath to come back, this is a perfect year. Yeah, he's gonna walk out with I, it. I think that if Phil Heath is at even as minimal as ninety percent, he can win. He's, he's got it. it. He's hard to beat, man. Like, how do you how do you beat? Like, I think he's. It's funny to say, but he, he he's not going to be appreciated until he leaves, right? Like, the guy is but one of the best all time. Think about him being gone for a year, how the tables turned on mm -hmm. the way he the, the, his narrative. Exactly. Remember when he was winning, 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 and he, it was a negative, negative, negative. One year gone, everyone was like, come back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's you know, no one likes the, publicity. The, the guy that's winning for some reason. It's no. the publicity. Dude, it, and it goes in every... Every, single sport. every aspect or every genre there is, right? Think about it. Like, no one likes a president. 
You're right. Yeah. No one likes Mr. Olympia. LeBron James is getting a lot of hate. Bro. Right. Think about like even celebrities. They can't even like go outside without someone saying nothing negative about them. Yeah. But the other, well, everyone loved Kai. Yeah. Everyone loved him because he he did a win. But I guarantee you, if he won two or three people, but uh, it's time for someone new. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That works. So yeah, I, I would say uh, unanimous decision. We all agree on on Phil. <laughs> Yeah, if he if he comes if he if comes he in steps back on stage, he, he'll probably yeah. yeah I can see that. If, if not, it's an open field. But I have a I have a so, better question just because I have a little bit of bias. Uh-huh. I don't know how closely you follow. What about the two twelve? Oh, I mean it's gonna be uh, if we assuming everybody's gonna get there, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Because okay, I think Lunsford has the most potential in that division, but um, Clarita. Is ridiculous. Like, yeah. he's like okay. He he is. I can't even say he's smaller. He's he's shorter. He's not smaller. <laughs> he, 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 Sean, Sean, Sean's five two. Yeah, so th- 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 that doesn't help him per se, but his physique is ridiculous. You you have so much perfect physiques in that because if you look at Keon Pearson, Keon have like a perfect physique too. So you have Lunsford, Clarita, and Keon all have perfect physiques. George Peterson is one of the most shredded. Crazy looking people you'll ever see. He might be a little bit lanky looking for that division. I I, I, yeah. I, I would I would say I would say George would probably do extremely well, mm-hmm. but the lineup against him is going to be an issue because he's five because he's five eight. Yeah, yeah. You know, Sean's five two, and he smoked in his last show. Yeah. I mean, he just had it, slam dunk, done, finished. It was it was didn't even have to think about it. George, you mean? Yeah, yeah, oh, but, yeah, but, Tampa. yeah. But this, this is a whole different beast, a whole different ball game. And honestly, now, now that you mention it, I think the two twelve is more competitive and open. Yeah, well, it's because the guys are closer. Yeah, closer. yeah. Like it's not like yeah, Phil is gonna win, right? It's right, right, like, right. It's kind of like you don't know who's gonna win because Kamala's great, but he doesn't have the, the the structure these guys have. Yeah, like he doesn't have he doesn't have the sweep on the quads. No. He doesn't have the like. That's what. That's like. Obviously, I don't know if you know, but Sean's my boy. But just the billowing quads on Sean, the roundness, the fullness. You know, so I think if he has, it's just lately I asked the question because lately, you know, and there's no hate towards. I, I know George. I don't know Keon personally, but I know George. Mm-hmm. Um, but Keon hasn't even qualified yet. Yeah, I was. You thinking- know, and and people are pushing and pushing and pushing. Like let the man like. Do his thing. Get into let him, it. Let him, let him qualify. Mm-hmm. Let him stand on the stage. Because people have to remember as well. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. Would Breon beat Sean or Kamal? Uh, I would have to say no. <laughs> no, no way. Okay. But Breon beat George and Keon. Good point. Yeah, no, nobody you know? Yeah. And not to say that I, – I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, in my personal preference, I love Keon's physique. I do too, yeah. But, again – He's 24, 25. Very young. He's 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, mm-hmm. he, he's great. I, I think he could be top six. Mm-hmm. But, dude, like, when you see guys like Sean and Kamal in person, crazy. it's a different it's a different world. It's not, yeah. it's not Instagram, yeah. man. That's it's it. not Instagram That's anymore. It. That's what I was saying. It's a different beast. This is it. This is where it really gets, this is where it gets real. 212, 212 is looking crazy. Looking yeah. Crazy. And, I mean, th- there's more guys that, that, you know, that we don't even mention. Cause the yeah, there, it's always there's crazy. a guy, uh, he got 10th last year. I think his last name is Kyle Derone. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, and he, he ended up winning a show after Olympia. He, he got 10th. He got overlooked. It was his first year. I guarantee you this year, I mean, he's then – look him up. Uh, I think it's Angel Calderon. He's uh-huh. retarded. Oh, what's the other guy's name with the crazy belt? He works with Patrick Tour. He's like Switzerland from Switzerland or something. Oh, uh, Nicholas Valud. He he looks like his uh, his proportions are kind of weird, like like his his waist and but he looks crazy. He he has so much muscle. It's not even funny. It, it doesn't mm. make he has so much muscle. He has to take a year off of bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had a he had a downsize a little bit. <laughs> that, that's wild. That crazy? It's some crazy shit. Thinking about it now, I, I think two twelve is gonna be just as good as the open. Like, yeah, yeah, yes, definitely. 
Uh, if Phil steps on stage, I mean, where's the excitement? Yeah, because because you're gonna you're gonna take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the excitement's gonna be in him stepping on stage. That exactly. that's it. It was you know it, when you went to those. Show, I don't have you been to Olympia? No, I actually never. Been to, I might go this. Oh, year. yeah. It'll be cool if you go this year. I'm I, I'm just planning on going this year as well. But uh, I went in sixteen as well. But I'm sure you always watched it. But it's like it, it came to a point where it was like, all right, who's gonna be second, and third? You know what I mean? Yeah. It you kind of knew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Phil is is one of the most complete bodybuilders we've have ever seen, and he, he's not going to be appreciated fully until like after he retires. After he retires, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I think I think Phil the, the quality of his his physique, like when he those hamstrings, the glutes, the back double bicep, is that back double is like whose back double is better than that? He's just, he's just not the only one ever came close is Kai. No, no, I, I, no, the only no, one no, but that, that's, that's one at Olympia. It would have to be, I would say it's between Phil and Ronnie had the best back double. Yeah. I would yeah. say it's like, like, like from head to toe. We oh, from an overall back double, yeah. Yeah, glutes, calves, like anything. Yeah, yeah. it was it, it was crazy. Yeah, it, it, it was wild, man. Oh, man. But listen, you guys have been great, man. Is there anybody you guys want to uh, shout out? Like any sponsors, anything? Well, you know, I, I, I'm i just going to say with the Olympia coming up, you know, I'm just really hoping that Sean Clarita will be able to take it this year. Yeah. So I, I'm backing him all the way. He got third. Huh? He got third place. Yeah, he got third last year, yeah. I think – I can't see Kamal. Kamal is great, but I don't think – I don't think he'll beat Sean, man. Oh, don't – you know what Sean told me? He told me, which I, we, I guess we couldn't see over the screen – but he told me that seeing come on in person, he said that he was so dry. Okay, that makes he sense. was like it was. He was like he, he he said that they had tanning at the same time. Yeah. He said it was weird. They had tanning at the same time, and when he saw him, he was like, Gee, he's so dry." He said, "So as long as he can match that dryness and condition, I think he's bigger than him." Yeah. So maybe it was this that that pushed him over the edge, but. I don't know. I think that Sean has better proportions than him, in my yeah, opinion. So. Mm-hmm. He looks like he looks like a flex thriller, bro. He looks like yeah, a there and like crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Any last words uh, for you, for you, Mike? No, uh, I'd like to thank you for letting us come on. You know, thank you. Um, that we definitely appreciate that. That's definitely cool of you. Um, and you know, hopefully we'll talk again. And if not, maybe we'll see each other at Olympia. Exactly. Yeah, um, I definitely look forward to doing this again. I can't thank you enough. Of course, man. Thank you guys for coming on. Um, do you have any? Uh, did you plan out your next show, or anything, Mike, or no? Um, I was gonna take the year off anyway, so it actually worked out because uh, the whole quarantine, <laughs> uh, everything out here is canceled. I, I mean, you used to live out here, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, like the bi- Atlantic states, the Easterns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are the big. These are the big tri-state area shows. Those are canceled. Yeah. Wow. They both been canceled, so I would have had to requalify if I wanted to go back down anyway. Yeah. So it wouldn't have worked out for me regardless. So thank God I want to take you up. So maybe maybe Atlantic States in June. That's a big show, yeah. Yeah, maybe that if the world is back to normal. Hopefully, man. Hopefully by by next yeah. year. Like, no, but thank you guys for coming yep. on. Uh, I'm definitely going to have you guys uh, on again. Uh, probably after your show, man. Eh? Yeah, maybe that. Thank yeah, you. If he, you know, if yeah. he wins, that would be pretty cool. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a good night.